Okay, morning everyone. Um, I don't have a regulatory humour, okay, but um, it's a happy Valentine's Day. So <laughs> happy Valentine's Day to all, and uh, we should, instead of regulatory humour, we should have a regulatory harmonisation time, okay, talking about solutions. I've been working um, for the pharmaceutical industry for five years prior to joining HSA. So I, I understand the limitations because I went through it okay, um, so far. And in comparison to the other industries, I must say the progress I felt in the pharmaceutical or in the health product industry is quite slow itself. And I hope I can be very candid here because I understand that there are challenges with regard to um, the differences in the regulatory frameworks as well as the capacity and implementation timelines. In fact, I don't think that we are disputing anymore about the science itself because that is uniformly and robustly accepted for drug development. To me, I feel that our discussion now is about the art itself, whereby we, we, would, we should be discussing how we want to work together, collaborate as well as uh, cooperate together as well. First of all, I must say that um, what it was mentioned yesterday from Prof Lufkins and Caroline that other industries like the banking industry was fast in the harmonisation efforts. In fact, I was intrigued by the example yesterday whereby one card, different ATM machines drawing um, individual local currency and I don't know whether we can achieve the one product um, looked at by different regulatory agencies but one world itself and local products with local requirements can also be looked at. In fact, I, I was Googling as well um, what other industries were doing. So things like um, the aviation industry and the atomic um, energy industry um, were able to achieve harmonization efforts actually re relatively quicker, earlier, and actually in a much more coherent manner. So why then, I don't understand, was um, product safety, which is of utmost importance to the politicians, the economies, our consumers, as well as the industry and regulators, why we couldn't be moving as fast as what the aviation industry as well as the atomic energy industry has been moving on. So I looked at um, the International Civil Agent Aviation Organization, the ICAO, and then where it actually serves as a global forum for 191 member states. Okay, and it seeks constantly to foster and support the sustainable growth for air transport and international civil aviation through bringing together the member states as well as the industry players to determine areas of strategic priority, um, develop policies and standards, coordinating global monitoring, analysis and reporting initiatives and delivers very targeted assistance and capacity building. This is in contrast to ICH, which does not actually contain even anything more than 100 uh, or close to 191 regulatory uh, agencies that we have. I think in the ICO strategic objective, okay, in, terms of um, in, in terms of development, they have a global aviation safety plan, which is the strategy, broad strategy itself, followed by the initiatives, which is at the tactical level. And then they even come up with regional and national safety plans, which is the action plans that the region and the sub-regional level should be looking at. And I think this um, roadmap is actually based on very high-level principles that have been accepted by all the aviation stakeholders as vital to enhancement of the safety levels within the global aviation industry. And it, in, in, it includes a step-by-step -step guide, actually even to help the safety enhancement plans at the regional or sub-regional level. So what they did was, um, they understand that attain attainment of a safe system is actually the highest priority in aviation. But they are now, now even looking beyond that to see how to make a safer um, aviation industry even much more safer. So the challenge is therefore to drive an already low accident rate even lower. And they actually come up with very precise safety targets for the industry as well as for the regulators to work on. And what they do is they also establish a coordination mechanism to ensure that the roadmap and the plan are kept up to date in a coordinated way. They have a website which is this Flight Safety Information Exchange website, which has been developed to provide the community with access to safety-related information globally. And the cooperation between the states and the, um, between the, states and the regulators were vital in terms of as, uh, information exchange for safety-related activity as well as um, 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 
as well as, well as um, revising the goals that they have at the regional and sub-regional level. And they also came, came up with these standards and recommended practices. And how they define standard was in terms of any specification, configuration, performance, um, personnel or procedure that is recognised as necessary for the safety or regularity of the international air aviation and to which the member states will have to conform in accordance with the convention. But the recommended practice is actually the same definition but it's something that instead of recognised as necessary, it is recognised as desirable. And what they do is they actually audit, um, ICO actually audits the um, state itself um, uh, the, the recommended practices that they have through audits of the state uh, oversight systems and they have actually two oversight programs that they have. I think similarly, International Atomic Energy um, Agency was also um, required to promote international cooperation and they came up with safety requirements as well as safety guides for the industry as well as the regulators to follow on. I think when we look at these two um, agencies, I also then reflected on what we have. And I thought that PICS itself, which actually started um, since 1970, which was PIC, and then it went on to PICS in 1995, was something that was actually quite good itself. Because it actually allows a very, f um, inf uh, a very f informal as well as a flex more flexible kind of cooperation scheme to actually encourage um, the member states to have mutual recognition of the inspections, to harmonise the GMP requirements and to have the training and of the inspectors, exchange of information and mutual confidence all integrated under the PICS body itself. And I thought that would be very um, relevant when we are talking about the proposal that I'm going to look at um, going uh, soon. Some other possible harmonisation activities of which I think um, over the last few weeks, okay, um, I've, I've mentioned about the adaptive licensing at the DIA in, in Asia, Singapore. I think two days ago, um, Janet from FDA also mentioned about the one-step um, drug approval with just one phase, uh, with just phase one clinical trial data for the breakthrough therapies itself. And I think we have a lot of new schemes that are coming up. Okay, but the problem is all these new schemes, I don't know okay, whether you know that when we are coming up with these new schemes and we have been talking about adaptive licensing for years and it seems that sometimes we have a problem in terms of moving forward even when we have something good that's on the plate itself. So um, basically when, when I'm looking at what I'm going to propose and this is not a this is just my personal view and not doesn't stand for Health Sciences Authority in Singapore itself. Something very bold, okay, um, is to actually look at some a coalition that is something similar to ICAO or IATA itself. And it is to actually use that to influence and get the political will for health, trade and economic reasons. And I think like what Lambit has mentioned just now, political will and common shared vision is something that is very important for us to look at. And with that, um, uh, coalition is to break into smaller working schemes by having small pilots for decision making and responsibilities. Similar to what PIX is doing already at the manufacturing activities level, is to look at whether we can have that kind of scheme um, for the pre-marketing evaluation as well as the post-marketing pharmacovigilance levels. So you have you know, um, three different schemes that is looking at covering the whole product life cycle. As well as these schemes should also look at covering all the product um, including drugs, medical devices, and advanced therapies. Then with that is to build on a proper governance structure, whether this is an expanded kind of ICH or WHO platform, or whether it's another separate organisation altogether. But I think when we are talking about forming another separate organisation, it's something that we should actually be avoiding, because I think what we have done over the years was to create overlapping um, structures and agencies or organisations all over and sometimes um, it, is, it is very worthwhile to now look at whether that all these structures are actually aligned to each other because with limited resources that we are having, you know, whether do we actually sometimes have even fatigue in you know, attending so many conferences and, and organisation meetings. And then also with the proper governance structure is to put on proper funding structure and 
um, that I think is very important to be sustained, to, to make sure that the organisation is sustained. And then um, how do we actually form the smaller groups is to, whether to, is to look at either at the regional or sub-regional level or even looking at smaller bilateral or bilateral groups that can actually form and look at consistency and alignment. And I think yesterday it was also mentioned at for three levels in terms of legislations, regulations, standards and technical guidelines. And where I think you know, um, there, there will be difficulties in alignment would be the re legislation and regulation level because that we have to understand that there is national sovereignty rights that, uh, and, and national requirements that have to fulfil. But in terms of standards and technical guidelines, we can actually look at um, harmonisation similar to what ICAO has been doing which is general for all the regulatory agencies in terms of the minimum standards that will have to be met. And then what they do, what, we, what it can be done is to then look at having a, another set whereby there is localised or regional needs that have to fall of these minimum standards and which would have to be put forth so that it's very transparent and consistent to the industry and the different stakeholders. Because we understand that we cannot harmonise everything. You know, there is ethnicity requirements, there is um, um, tropical drugs in the tropical re region that requires separate stab stability studies that we will need to understand as well. And then after that is to adapt or to adopt the implementation plans towards harmonisation. I think where we can converge would be in terms of the standard practices and processes for achieving equ uh, equivalence of the same goal. Okay, and that same goal is to ensure a quicker, safer product development and approval process. And similar to PICS and ICO, then what, what we can see would be that if one product is approved by this coalition kind of organisation, when it's approved by this, it can actually be approved and be used everywhere around the world or through you know, uh, mutual work sharing processes. Unless there is separate regional requirements, like I've mentioned before, then there will be separate regional requirements that would need to um, be built in. And then after that, this coalition will have to ensure that there is um, random audits um, to meet the standards as well as the processes itself. And I think um, in terms of HSA, we have like similar, something similar to the convergence of processes. And that's the full abridge and the verification process of which we built in a confidence level whereby if it is a, a product that is not evaluated by any of the reference agencies, then we go through a full um, dossier approval. If it is approved by one reference agency, then we go through a bridge one, which is a shorter review timeline. And if it's a key reference agency that we recognise, then it only goes through a verification route, of which is a much shorter review timeline itself. And I think after that, what we need to look at is to make sure that we have proper infrastructure like the Flight Safety Information Exchange website that I've talked about to share pre- and post-market information. And then those that cannot fulfil in the coalition, like what PICS is doing now, is to help them with competency and capacity building. And then the regulatory agency can follow up with defining key evaluation and safety data that is transparent and acceptable to all. I think all this will require very important, the mutual trust and respect by the regulators and the consumers on the integrity and processes that have been put in place. And then what we can do is we will make sure that we also have to go back and change the mindset of our staff and the regulators. Um, because what happens is every time you know, we can decide on something, but when we go back, there's always a lot of setback and pushback that is being um, seen either from the industry staff or the regulator staff. I think the other thing with regard to ASEAN countries would be that we know that you know, China, Korea, Japan you know, is something that um, they have separate requirements and this time round we have um, colleagues from Japan here but I think something that we can look at and explore is to bring this you know, into a global platform whereby we can even get the ASEAN countries involved so that we actually know what is the requirements that they have that is different from um, the uh, international requirements that we will require. And I think lastly, it's very important to look at um, what Lambit has proposed in terms of the key um, success pointers. So the good governance, you know, um, commitment, willingness to cooperate and compromise, allowing flexibility, as well as um, advancing, you know, what we are going through in terms of, um, I would say here, six Cs that I've mentioned, that we have mentioned at the DIA itself, commitment, convergence, it's very important to communicate, um, cooperate, 
be collegial with each other and to ensure that we have increased in training capacity. And I think I would like to end off with this proverb here. If we want to go fast, we can go alone. But if we want to go far, we have to go together. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ray. Um, so we'll, we'll take questions at the end. We have a discussion period. So now I'll introduce um, Mary Lou Valdez, who's Associate Commissioner for International Programs at the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. 